Good morning. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Liz Baxter, uh, the CEO of North Sound ACH. Oh, whoa. Wow, if that felt exciting, wait till the rest of the day comes along. <laughs> um, we have uh, an amazing couple of days for, the, for all of you. And for the first time, if any of you have been to prior convenings, and you like look for me or you look for Tiffany to go like, where is something, how is something, what's coming next? We're not the people this time. So uh, I'm gonna actually ask our planning team to stand up, please. And uh, Joy, I'm gonna ask you to do what you told me you were gonna do and just like wave your arms in the air. <laughs> If anybody has questions, they should look for Joy, uh, who has been the project manager in helping pull all of this together, both with staff and with partners and panelists and everybody uh, who's gonna be a part of these two days. So, an amazing body of work, and uh, it's wonderful having a team uh, that can do that. So, I'm just gonna do a couple of logistics uh, before we actually are welcome to this space. There are restrooms out in the hallway. There is a gender neutral restroom and a men's restroom. We have a quiet room that's available for anybody who feels like they just need a space uh, to be off by themselves. Uh, we have a breastfeeding, chest feeding room for anybody who needs to use that space. And trying to make this uh, day something where you feel interactive, but you also feel like you can just step away if you need to do that. And you know, as we often do when we are hosting our convenings, we try and have an opening that kind of gets us started uh, in a good way. And so I'm gonna bring Michaela Vendiola up, who is our tribal liaison, and she will do an introduction uh, to the person who's gonna welcome us here uh, to Tulalip. Thank you. Hoth Dadatu, good morning. I'd um, squitchil for our relatives from the north. Um, my name is Michaela Vendiola. I use she, hers pronouns. Um, I carry two ancestral names, Yaidawats from Swinomish and Koso from Walker River Paiute. Um, I am an enrolled tribal member of the Walker River Paiute tribe, also Swinomish, and I grew up on the Lummi Indian Reservation. Um, and I'm the tribal liaison for North Sound Accountable Communities of Health, and I'm so happy to see all of you this morning. Um, so on your agendas, it says, Welcome by Tulalip Tribes, and we've had to uh, deviate from that just a little bit. This morning, um, the, the Lashutsi language is having their finals at Marysville Pilchuck High School, so um, Natasha Gobin, who's the Lashutsi language teacher, is having to be there. Um, the plan is now that she'll join us at lunchtime um, to speak with you all, so thank you for um, that change. And um, I'd like to welcome um, Nancy Wilbur and, um, to, and Lona Wilbur to come um, of here. Both of these um, elders, aunties, are from Swinomish and um, are here today with our keynote, um, Matika Wilbur. So, Thank you, aunties, for um, jumping in when, when I needed you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nancy Wilbur, and my Indian name is Satsaik, and that was given to me by my <clears throat> grandmother from Swinomish. And um, I would just like to welcome all of you here today um, for this beautiful gathering. I, I would like and hope that we would open our hearts and our minds to all of the new things we're going to hear and maybe some of the old things we're going to hear today. Um, I want to um, thank and acknowledge the ancestors uh, of this land, that they are allowing us to be here today and that they help us in, in our thinking and that they help us in our journey. Um, my prayer is that we all uh, enjoy today. Uh, we are thanking you for being here, and um, we hope 
that you have a beautiful and educational experience here in opening your minds and hearts. And in this we pray, and Creator, bless us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and back to you, Liz. All right. So our theme is the heart of transformation, and the art is capitalized for a reason. And so I'm actually, you know, sometimes we ask you questions to get started. I'm really curious how many of you play a musical instrument? How many of you do like writing, whether it's prose or narrative or poetry? Uh, how about painting? Storytelling? Any other art? Photography? We think of art as being this thing that's separate from our professional lives. It's separate from the work that we do when it's really a part of us. It's part of how we show ourselves. It's part of how we talk about and demonstrate the work and the lives and our families and our history and our culture. And so you're going to feel that interwoven throughout today and tomorrow. And we have this amazing kind of surprise activity where you're actually going to help us create a piece of art uh, before the end of tomorrow. So excited for that. Um, so we're going to start with like our land acknowledgement, and it was really important for us to be welcome to this land before we think about how we acknowledge this space. So we begin by acknowledging with humility that the land where we are today is the territory of the people of the Salish Sea. And today, specifically and tomorrow, we are here in the land of the Tulalip tribes. Their presence is imbued in the waterways, shorelines, valleys, and mountains of the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish people since time immemorial. And without being welcome to the space, the acknowledgement seems a little bit disconnected. So I just really appreciate uh, both Nancy and Lana for welcoming us here uh, and letting us begin that day, our day in that way. Next slide, please. So we have a couple of working agreements uh, that we have shared and they've evolved over time. You all have actually been a part of helping us uh, craft them, draft them, refine them. And so part of what we want to do is to be kind to each other. And you know there are just so many stressors, whether they're internal, they're external, they're local, they're international, that we're all kind of living within. And so wanting to be kind to each other while we're here in this room, and hopefully it carries outside of this room. Uh, to be courageous with the conversations that we undertake as we're working in this large group and in small groups. And to allow that some of the things that come up may make us feel uncomfortable because of our own experiences and our own backgrounds. Um, but to just try and create a space where people can be brave and respond to some of those things that are uncomfortable. Uh, curiosity is one of our key values, so asking each other's questions before we jump in with our opinions about things uh, so that we actually create a space where we're all learning together. And then this last one we've added in the last six months or so, and it's that things are going to come up during the day that might feel like they're big and we need to address them before we can move to the next thing on the agenda. And that we're going to try to do that, but if we can't, we're going to make a commitment that we will find the right space and the right time to follow up with anything that feels like it is worthy of its own next step. So we're making that commitment and hope that you'll make that commitment with us. So the goals today, probably not very surprising or profound, uh, that we want to gather, strengthen this network. We want you to see who all is in this network along with you. Uh, that we are going to both see and hear and get to experience uh, what it's like to be at the intersection of the arts and health and equity and healing. And just some continued opportunities for us to learn as we head toward collaborative action. Because the reminder that I'm going to give you is that this isn't called the Collaborative Learning Network. It is called the Collaborative Action Network. And so there are so many of you that are already working together 
on different projects, and we want you to keep hearing about those and seeing where the opportunities are to raise up more opportunities to work across organizations and key leaders in the region. We'll go to the next slide, please. And so we have been working with um, Children of the Setting Sun now for almost six years. And uh, this past year, uh, took on a contract with John Ryber, uh, who, you know, there's this group that films all of our convenings and how it is that they can take, you know, probably like 16 hours of film and condense it into nine minutes is astounding. It's a gift that is not a gift that I have. And so we have a video just to get us started of like just some key thoughts and themes that came out of our gathering uh, in August. This book, The Art of Gathering, is a book that our team shared uh, about a year and a half ago. And so this is a quote from that. Thanks. Why do we gather? We gather to honor and acknowledge. So we begin by acknowledging with humility that the land where we are today is the territory of the people of the Salish Sea. If you spend time around Indian country, you, you begin to learn that we love to talk, we love to visit, and we love to share. And, um, we gather to solve problems we can't solve on our own. But I'm gonna um, close with a prayer. Creator, grandfather, grandmother, I wanna say a special prayer for this group in this room. Just thank them for coming together for a mission. We gather to make decisions. It was a great opportunity to actually see the dial move. This was an incubator for ideas that could provide uh, a lot of changes in the healthcare system. We gather because we need one another. I was just like so happy there was a space for um, people of color to really just talk about the hardships that was going on during 2020. I'm nervous. <laughs> a lot of times I feel out of place, but today I feel I'm in the right place. Um, thank you. I, I like to start with my vulnerabilities because if I'm able to do that, then I know that I'm speaking from the heart. We gather to show strength. This kind of power that is shared is, is going to disrupt oppression. Those courts swallow many of our youth, men and women, and they go into human landfills across the state called prisons. We gather to build companies and schools and neighborhoods. Culture is relevant to all aspects of health, and not just our physical health, but our mental health, spiritual, emotional, and physical. Belonging should be the big B because it's the umbrella term under which the diversity, equity, and inclusion should fall under. It should be the central thing that we focus on. Prisons are a direct reflection of our public school systems. Our kids at home and at schools, we teach them very early on that they can be thrown away. And when schools do throw our kids away, who is there for them? The streets. So what we're about to do is talk about who we've been, who we are now, and who we might become. Being a part of this collaborative action network, this network of providers will change you. It will change who you are, it'll change your trajectory in life, and it'll change your organization, and it'll change the communities that we serve. Because we're all coming together with a common mission, and that is to boldly go into the darkness of the people who are still suffering, unapologetically rip them out, and provide them with the resources that they need to be able to sustain and survive and thrive in their life. And if all of us in this room can share in that same mission and unapologetically love, then there's nothing in this world that can fucking stop us.